Hi, we are the Women of Wellness and we are going to be starting a whole series mm -hmm. on teen suicide. Mm -hmm. um, and we're calling our series Teen Suicide, a call to connection because mm -hmm. we're feeling pretty Pretty much like that's going to be the thing that's going to help us. Exactly. So my name is Dr. Natalie Marr, and this is my friend, Jennifer Zenz Olson, and we are both mental health professionals, and we'll, you know, talk a little bit more about ourselves we to are. give you that information. Mm -hmm. um, but we also are mothers of teenagers in a community where there's been six suicidal deaths. Yeah. Um, and so we have come together to create this series, um, really honestly coming from a very personal level, yeah. which is what we're gonna talk about in this video. So it's gonna kinda introduce you to why we decided to do this series, um, and then the series will talk about a little bit more yeah. when we start it up with you. So. Yeah, exactly. So as Natalie said, my name is Jennifer Zenzels and I'm a licensed independent clinical social worker. Um, I've been practicing for 20 years mm -hmm. and I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about the story of how I got introduced to working with teens. And I don't even yeah. know how much I've ever told you this story, know. but yeah. I, it's kind of hilarious to me because when I went to grad school, I'm going to be honest, I ended up with uh, two supervisors. I had one male and one female. Mm -hmm. And uh, the female was probably like middle age and the older gentleman, he was probably, you know, been practicing for years and years and years. Really great guy. Yeah. Super stoic. And I'm the opposite. I don't know if you've met me, but like really, uh, like yeah. I was like, I have no, this guy, I have no idea how he and I are going to work together. Okay. And so I'm serious. <laughs> and, and if he watches this, he'll crack up. Cause I was literally like, oh, okay, this is going to be interesting. Cause I'm like all out there and you're all in here. And so one of the first things he said was, by the way, you're going to be helping me do boys anger group. <laughs> I was like, um, Ooh, like newbie, stop me. newbie, that, right. And I'm like, um, okay, not a guy. <laughs> Don't know anything about that and have no idea about teens who I fear will eat my face. And ah, so yes. it was this really scary, like, I have no idea how this is going to work. He came from a totally different perspective therapeutically than I even thought I ever wanted to go. And so I think it's, Amazing to me, I guess this yeah. is what I want to say, is it's a miracle I ended up where I did. Because I would have never chosen that. I would never have known it was going to be something that I wanted to do. So I did this boys anger group, ended up loving it, and um, growing so much from it and watching my, my mentor and supervisor train me in how he builds connection, which is what we're going to be talking about throughout this entire yes. series. And watching him is like was just magic. And so by the end of this, I was like, okay, now I see what he's doing there. And it became something I really loved. And as I was leaving the practice as I was graduating, he was like, Jenna, I would really love to see you continue to work with teens. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this is me. You're like, okay. Like, I liked it, but I was like, you know, how will that happen? And there was a day treatment for adolescents that opened up a position and he wrote a letter and I'm certain he's why I got my job. Oh. And so I think it's very interesting. And I've said this throughout my practice that it just, my spiritual belief is that I was, I was always being divinely guided to this work. Mm -hmm. And that was really like the miracle and it's in its essence. And so that's how I got started. And then I spent two and a half years working with teens all day, every day. Um, and it just took off from there and it became a passion of mine and it's something I deeply love. And I, and I have personal experience as a teen as well, which I'll get into in a minute. We're going to introduce <laughs> ourselves professionally and then I'll tell you about why, why, my why, why I'm showing up here. Um, and so that's kind of how I ended up tripping into adolescent work yes. and it just became a complete passion and root of mine that I absolutely loved. And so right. I've been doing that for 20 years um, and that's kind of a little bit of my story and my background about how I think I... Stumbled into Stumbled this. Stumbled into this. Yeah. How about that? I know it's amazing. I know. I haven't heard that story before. Okay. So I was like, I didn't know if I was like reinventing the wheel. You're like, <laughs> thanks, That's Jen. No. Um, so I'm a licensed psychologist mm -hmm. and I have been practicing for about 13 years mm -hmm. um, and work with people ages six and up. So I work with kids, I work with teens, I work with some families, I work with adults. Um, not anywhere near the expertise that Jen has with the teenage population because it's not something that I've specialized Exclusive. in, but I've certainly had a good amount of experience in it, um, both in helping parents and in helping teens. Absolutely. Because uh, I do a fair amount of parent coaching. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess if you want me to give the background of why I became a licensed psychologist, and I am certain if you found my graduate school uh, application that it said something to the same effect, is that I'm the middle child of five kids. You're the problem I'm solver. I am the <laughs> middle child of five kids. <laughs> Yep. With 12 years difference from oldest to youngest and uh, 
I was just, you know, yeah. poised to be the peacemaker from the very, very beginning. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a, a skill set of sorts that I Absolutely. came into grad school with, Absolutely. not one that I um, just learned throughout grad school. Yeah. So I was drawn to it because I was kind of gifted. Yeah. Not really skilled before yes. I got there. Yeah, <laughs> and that was, that was what drew me in. Absolutely. And, um, so here we are. I, I think it's amazing. I think it's interesting too to me when I think about this field is that you hear people talk about it being a calling and it really is. There is purpose. Like I feel like in my life I was always being mm -hmm. led to that point and that career path. It was it was always kind of being guided. Yeah, like I said, sure. I think it's, it's so interesting when you talk to people and you hear their stories, like how we all ended up here. Yeah. It always fascinates me. Well, part me. of it for me too was I always wanted to be a doctor and... I hated chemistry. Really? And physics and math. They hate me I too. I didn't know that. <laughs> Still, that didn't work out well. So I you did not have a good connection, right? <laughs> that's no, perfect. I did not have a good connection. There was no good connection. Same, same. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, I mean, I think that's really important that we just talk about a little bit about our backgrounds and how yeah. we're here. And, and, and Natalie touched on this too, is that, you know, we're coming from a community that's been tragically traumatized by six suicides. Five at the high school level, one middle school level. And here's what I want to say, though. This is for everybody. I, if, I, if I could, like, have a minute to preach. <laughs> Please do. This video is for everybody because yes. it, it, we are all a part of the community that can stand up for making change around these things. Yes. And it's so important. And it's not one person's job. It's not one system's job. It's it's like all of us. And I think that we both feel really passionate yeah. about that piece of it. And so for Natalie and I, this video series was our culmination of like, like I love her so much. One day she sends me this text. She's like, so I have this idea for this video series. Are you in? I'm like, yes. yes. She doesn't even tell me what. I mean, I knew it was about this, but like, I, yes. I'm just like, yes. So because this is something we're so passionate about as mothers, mm -hmm. as women, mm -hmm. as community members, uh, as, I mean, we are, we are witnessing all of these, these tragic events and we feel them personally and we worry for our own children. I mean, yeah. we're parents of kids that are in this school. <laughs> they, they go there every yeah. single day. Like, so I mean, for us, I think it is just so multi-tiered. It you is multi-tiered. You know multi what I'm saying? I think that's really and it's, important. And, and I think that you and I have a very similar personality in that we want to we are doers. Yeah. We're yes. not talkers. Well, right. we're, we can be. <laughs> we are talkers. We talk a fair amount. But Same. we want we want to have some movement yes. in changing. Absolutely. Um, and the systems fail us, guys. Yeah. It's it's okay. Absolutely. I mean, systems do fail. Yeah. Um, systems aren't thing people, they're not connecting exactly. with us. Uh, so they only can go so far. And um, rather than sit here and and purse apart why systems are failing and what you think they should do differently or not differently. Um, we just figured we have some collective wisdom between the two of us yeah. as mental health professionals, as mothers, um, as community members mm -hmm. that why not, why not throw this together? I mean, I think that you and I could have put this together in a nice series and sold it on Pessy. <laughs> exactly. We had to. exactly. We but traveled the country. Not, yes. But that is not, but our, our whole point is, is exactly. like, we have this to give and want to give this to Absolutely. our community because it's so needed Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. So I think that's really, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a soul based thing for both mm -hmm. you and I, why we're yeah. here and what we're doing. Yes. So. We felt like, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about down the road a little bit is, is vulnerability. And, and I, we, as we started putting this together, I felt like, well, we could sit and talk about all of our goodness, you know, like how long we've been practicing yeah. and our big titles and, you know, and neither Natalie, I, or I think live in that space at all, but it's like, well, we have some credentials. We, you know, we're not some, you know, person off the street, like, hey, yeah. we know, we know a thing, we know, we know a thing, but I'm going to say, I think we really felt like vulnerability and honesty and, and disclosure was an important aspect of what we want to do because we want the community to be able to trust us. We would want teens to be able to trust us. We want people right. to know that there's also this very private and personal piece of what we go through when we when we are experiencing these suicides in the community. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it, it, I'll start off. I, I start go off, ahead. I guess. Go, go. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal journey with suicide and around that and how that impacted me. And then Natalie going to take the reins. But so my, my first and um, hardest story actually happened when I was 17 years old. Um, I was a junior in high school and um, my mom had been going through some personal things with her business. 
So I say personal because like I wasn't exactly privy to all that was going on, yeah. but there was some stress there and she had taken to doing things like disappearing for three days at a time and like not telling people where she was. And then she'd come home and then it'd be fine again for a while and then she'd be gone for again. It was this really weird like disappearing act and it was really unsettling and we didn't really know what was going on. And so um, the last time that this happened in this, in this weird series of events, she was gone for a while, uh, maybe a little bit longer, I think. Yeah. And honestly, this is terrible to say. By the way, I've gone to therapy. So I can't, this is not me going all therapy, yo. We've been, we've, we've done, been, we've done, we've the done work. some work. Um, I can't exactly recall, which is kind of funny to say. With yeah. time, you know how yeah. that is, like how it all kind of gets a little bit muddy. But um, so what happened was, I know I was home from school. My mom was missing. My dad and my oldest sister had gone out of the community, literally looking for my mother. I don't know. I don't know how we had that idea. I don't know if they were just going places they thought she might go. I don't even know. It was the strangest thing ever. So they're out looking. And this is pre-cell phone, right? So there's just like I can't. We didn't. We didn't have the MacGyver style brick yeah. phone anymore. There was none of that, none right? Of that. So they're out looking in the community, and I was home with my grandma, and um, I got the mail since I was home. I went out and I got the mail out of the mailbox and there's a card. And my mom had very beautiful, distinctive writing, like mm -hmm. beautiful. This is back in the day when they like really like taught yeah. everybody cursive. It was gorgeous writing. And so I called my sister, my middle sister's at home with her kids. She had small kids at the time. And I go, ah, oh, Nana got, there's a card in the mail to dad and it's, it's, it's mom's writing. And I, what do I do? And she's like, Jay, you have to open it. And I'm like, like, you know, it's so, it's so not your, it was like, this is so personal, dude. I don't know what's in it. I have no right. idea. Obviously I don't know what's in it, but I'm like, do you know, or open people's mails, you know, particularly your parents? Your parents like that's like know. a no, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, against all, you know, odds, I, you know, open up this, this card and I open it up and it's really, it's my mom telling my dad that she's going to drown herself. And so, you know, I'm reading this to my sister and I'm crying and she's crying and, and, and my, you know, my dad and my sister aren't even home to know this is going on yet. And my grandma's, you know, like we're all in this absolute state of, of distress. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think the most traumatic thing that happened to me, you know, in the beginning of my life was 17 and, and then a whole bunch of other things that ended up happening after that, that kind of domino effect in, into some really other beautiful um, conflict. But I want to talk about this issue with my mom because it was it was at a time I think I understood teenagers I think my point is at that point I was being I was being universally guided that I was going to end up doing this work it yeah. is it is literally my why like I think going through all of that oh by the way segue my apologies my mom did not commit suicide um but important. I want to talk very important note so I want to say that so uh, let me go back to that story because I, I kind of missed I missed that that step so she had been gone for probably about a week with us believing she was had committed suicide. We had no idea they had um, sent out, I think, um, local authorities to look mm -hmm. for anything that we could find. We didn't. Um, and then the weird thing started happening was, um, and you know back in the day, you'll yeah. get this, because nobody else will get this. Well, some of you, some of you, some might, of you might get so this. If we would get phone calls and I would answer and there would be that buzz. Do you remember from yeah. back in the day, old um, long distance calls yeah, yeah. would have that weird buzz in the mm -hmm. line? Well, I would pick up the phone and I would hear this weird buzz and nobody would answer. I was like, what in the hell? So, you know, click and, and whatever. And I must have always answered. I was a teenager. I mean, this was back before cell phones. You always answer the phone. I mean, that was the thing, right? And so I would occasionally get these weird phone calls while my mom was gone. But in the meantime, we all think she's gone. Yeah. I mean, I want to be very clear. You all thought we she spent was gone. a week believing my mom was dead or gone, and we were never going to see her again. So we're grieving as a family would grieve, as though we're never going to get to see her again. And and so I think that that's and I I want to say that because she didn't. Like I said, she does end up coming back, and that's a whole another layer of story. We're not gonna we don't have enough time today. Have enough time. Um, but I'm just gonna say she does come home. That's the good news. But the mark that it left on me is I mean it's forever. And I think that 17-year-old girl is, she's perpetual. I kind of joke about her. It's so very, hear me say, I have a per perpetual 17-year-old inside yes. me. And she's giving everybody the bird. She was real pissed about what happened. <laughs> As she should Sad and grieving and very, very pissed. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think you, even going through that personally, it was like, I wasn't good enough for you to stick around for. We weren't important enough for you to stay. We weren't, you know, you have all of these thoughts. And then when she came back and talked about what happened, which was another layer of that whole trauma, it was like, how is like how is this happening? And so I think for years and years, I know it's one it is and it's one of the reasons to this day, if somebody really matters to me, I'm gonna tell you. Because mm -hmm. knowing that for that for that period of time when I thought she was gone and watching yeah. the trauma for my family. And like 
I did I say all the things I wanted to say so people are important to me I mean literally if I'm traveling if I if I like hey I love you you're the best thing since sliced bread thank you so much for whatever I it is very important to yeah. me, and it's never left me and so I did actually learn like this really sadly horrible you know beautiful gift of a thing to do and be right. mindful I don't want to be anxious about it but I really took from that like we never know. Mm -hmm. We never know when the last minute's going to be. And so living with that, and like I said, just being at that pivotal age, um, it, it definitely did a number on me. And it took me till I was in my 20s to really get really good therapy to kind of work my way through some of the things that had happened. Yeah. But I mean, I we thought she was gone. And so mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't have a friend suicide. It wasn't a teen suicide, no. right? But rather it was my personal experience of a parent um, planning to take their life. Yeah. And just, and so, and as I've aged, I have a, I have a whole different perspective on that. I have, I think I have deeper compassion for it. But at the time, um, it was definitely the most traumatic thing that had ever happened to me. Right. And so it just, it paved a trail for me to, my why is that I never wanted another kid ever to it's feel like that. I never wanted a kid to feel like they didn't have the resource and support and connection they needed. And I was so blessed by so many people in my community. Yeah. Like my, I had some high school teachers that stepped up and in. I was dating a guy, his family stepped in. I literally, my aunt stepped in. I mean, people came out of the woodwork in such an incredible way. Mm -hmm. And 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 one of the things that I think is so beautiful about this story is that in, in, in the end, we ended up with a lot of financial issues that are a whole, like I said, a whole series of things. But But my point being, I was not going to be able to go to high school anymore. I went to private high school and um, we didn't have money. I literally had changed our, the whole trajectory of our lives, this whole event did. And, um, and somebody that I knew growing up um, in middle school and high school, her parents literally anonymously donated money for me to finish Aww. school. So I want to say, as we talk about connections, right? Yeah. I mean, those people kept me alive. Mm -hmm. My friends kept me alive. Those adults kept me alive. Yeah. They were resources that at a moment where I certainly could have felt like I was coming up to an edge. Yeah. Where I wasn't sure how I was going to get through this. Those people literally saved my life. Yeah. I have so much gratitude. So if I just looked at somebody and said, this is a horrible story. And it is, it's a horrible story. But it's, if I just said, that's it, you know, yeah. there's more than that. There's gratitude for the beauty that I think can come yeah. from, from humanity. That I think humanity is a really, mostly it's a beautiful place. And mm -hmm. I, I was really gifted, even at a really horrible time in my life with some incredible beauty. Yeah. So I'm really grateful for that. But I want to say my why was I never want to kid to go through this I never want another kid to have to feel that way it was awful yeah. and so for me it was really about stepping in and creating a space for never letting that and then honestly the reason I mentioned the gratitude is because for me I was like I'm gonna pay those people back what I do every day is paying those people back for their yeah. time and their energy, their kindness, their love, their patience. Yes. I mean, showing yeah. up like, yeah. okay, I, if you can do that for me, I'm going to do that yeah. for every single person I can. It was like very important to me that I, I paid that forward. Right. And so for me, that's, that is, that's this, that's my I mean, why. And yeah. And, and I think too, for my, you know, I talked a little bit about too, with my kids that are suicidal, my teens that have been over the years, the interesting thing is, um, some of them, when they went through their experience, it was hard and it was, it was terrible. And, and, and it, it was, it was, it was hard. You know, I, it's amazing to me to look at their lifespans now and the things that they've achieved. And to think about a point in time where that young adult or that teen was sitting with me and they were yeah. like, I don't know if I want to be here anymore. And then to watch them get out of school and go to college oh, or yeah. build a relationship and have children. I mean, I have seen people's lifespans right. unfold. And there's this really incredible thing to say that it's hard to have that wisdom when you're hurting. Like I don't, I, mm -hmm. I'm not dissing anybody that's had suicidal thoughts and feelings because I, I know they feel so real. But what I'm also going to say is we are, we are allowed that wisdom as we age to see the beauty of, of not taking that, that answer yeah not making that choice right. that those people when they felt that way I can't imagine a world without those people in it yeah and they've now gone on and their lives are so full and they're so happy and they're I mean it's just like that is the most beautiful ending of a story on the planet right yeah. Yeah. and I want to say that too because I think that that's really like if we don't say that too that we see the beautiful side of you know 
yeah. duking this crap out. You know, if I if I can if yeah. I can hang in there, if I can hang in there, um, there is something so much better coming for me. And I think it's yeah. very hard to have that wisdom when you're going through this. But it but that's a fact, and I've seen it over and over again. The beauty of what can happen when people are willing to hang in there mm -hmm. and trust those resources and yes. use, them, yes. use those connections. Yeah. So so that's my story. That's kind of how I got here. That's my why, and that's mm -hmm. why I'm fired up about wanting to help kids and make sure this doesn't happen to anybody else and yeah. nobody has this experience. Because mm -hmm. suicide is uh, a really unsettling subject. Oh, yeah. Really, Absolutely. It's just yeah. a really unsettling um, and a lot of myths. And I hope Absolutely. we have a chance to dispel some of those myths as we go through the series. Mm -hmm. um, myself, uh, I've had a few bump ups with suicide in my lifetime, not just professionally, but personally as well. Um, I was a director for a program for a while that had two suicidal deaths of our staff, not even very long apart and during, um, you know, monumental changes that were happening, uh, much of which felt like it was out of control for all of us. Yeah. So, um, that was devastating for me uh, early in my career and just didn't didn't know how I was supposed to, to stomach all of that. Um, I have, you know, helped family members and I can only speak to my experience with that, but I have helped family members um, get help and sometimes uh, not like me because I knew how to get them help and when to get them help and where to get them help uh, because of my profession. And... Um, relationships get tarnished because uh, suicide and depression are, are difficult things. But I think that personally, what really drives me is that I've battled major depression pretty much my entire adult life. Um, started pretty early in my 20s. I've been, you know, on medications, mm -hmm. um, some that work and some that don't, one that has for a good decade now for me. Uh, and I know what it feels like to hit the point in depression where you have an edge that you, you nothing internally is going to help you anymore. Yeah. So I, I understand exactly um, how it feels to get into that suicidal headspace, not want to do it. Um, it's more passive for me. Uh, my experience with it has been, um, but I definitely know you know, what it feels like to be in that space where you just don't feel like there's anything left yeah. for you to go. Yeah. And I can guarantee you that the story that Jen, you know, just shared is exactly why I sit here today, because I was surrounded by people yeah. in my family, in my church, yeah. um, in, in my, yeah, yeah, in my workplaces and my, you know, my children, all things really help to, to keep me connected to here yeah. and have resources from outside of myself when my internal resources were gone yeah. or limited in what they could help me with. Absolutely. And knowing, knowing that as a personal experience, um, just I really feel for people when they um, start to have these kinds of thoughts. And listen, guys, I have a doctorate. I'm not a dumb person. Um, you know, in the middle of the five kids, I've been making peace for people a long time in my life. Um, I've had pretty successful career, mm -hmm. uh, been good in school. It, it doesn't make sense that somebody who has all this going for her would hit that point. And so it's really important to me to kind of dispel some of those myths yes, yeah. to start with that, yes. that depression has symptoms. And one of those symptoms is suicidal thinking. It just is. Yeah. Um, and, and there's other you know, pieces at play and hopefully we'll also be speaking to those. But I can tell you that over and over, not just my clients, but myself, you see that having those connections with people, with organizations, mm -hmm. um, connections to a higher power, Absolutely. connections to things and purpose in your life, yes. um, pull <clears throat> you through dark, dark moments in your Absolutely. life. And I'm sure that most of us have known someone or ourselves have had these experiences, but nobody talks about it. Yeah. The stigma is super high. And I'm hoping through this series, we may even just as one of the connected pieces in our community, start talking, yeah. um, start equalizing ourselves and saying, mm -hmm. look, yep, I have all this going for me. And I look, you know, like 
there should never have been a reason why I would have considered that. Exactly. Um, I couldn't stop my, my mind from going there. Yeah. I have a clinical illness that yeah. I medicate and treat and keep under wraps. Yeah. Um, but there are times when it had me and that is, that is how depression works. Mm -hmm. And I think that people just need to hear this connection part is really what saves and it's not pamphlets and it's not systems in our schools and it's not, you know, parenting yeah. advice. Right. Um, it, it's all of it in a way mm -hmm. and it's none of it. It's, yeah. it's about the connections. And so hopefully we will, you know, be walking you through this series and showing you kind of where we're seeing in our community that there's big disconnections mm -hmm. and giving you some of our collective wisdom on what we think could help reconnect or start building connections where, um, we might we might heal this community and it might make a difference yeah mm -hmm. i think that's so i think that's so beautiful you're you're looking at that from a perspective of like again how the connections have have honestly saved yeah. you and you know i have a family member with um major depression I, it's it's in my family system yeah. I, it's it's everywhere this stuff is everywhere and i think that's really interesting like even in my work with clients, they would say, and I, yeah, I'm sure clients of this, like, your work is so hard. Like, I don't know how you do it. It's hilarious. Yeah. And it's not funny, but it's like, people are like just flummoxed about yeah. like, how in the world are you able to do this work and sit with people that are ding dong. <laughs> Rise or <done. laughs> Sorry. Okay, bad joke. Anybody in my family will know that joke. But anyway, <laughs> so, but my point is, is that I think it's really important to like look at those connections and having clients say to me, I don't know how you do this work. Yeah. And, and, and at first it was like, and how are you so positive? And you're always laughing and you're always do first of all, no one's always anything. So no. first of all, I love that Natalie was willing to be vulnerable enough to say this truth about herself because like, it doesn't look like a thing. Okay. So yeah. first, and, and if I told you my whole story and my history, you'd be like, Ooh, like, okay. Yeah. So my point is, is for me, I think, you know, one of my connections that I, I, I really, I love to talk about is that I think I, I was blessed and I say this to, and I said this to clients is I was really blessed that I never woke up a day in my life and I didn't know I wasn't loved. Yes. If I, I had, if I, I had to truly say, say that to you, if mm -hmm. I can, and so I think there is something very interesting about, I really believe that despite some of the craziest things that have happened to me and my family, yeah. I really believe that the reason that I do have resilience around it is I, I don't think I ever one time in my life had somebody look at me and say, you can't do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you can't do that. You can't be that. You can't. I never one time. And so despite the crazy things that may have happened, despite the fact that some really, um, like really, really complicated and deep issues happened, that at the end of the day, one of the things I always knew was that I was deeply loved. And I yes. think, and I, and I say that because out of respect, I, I think I had clients that came into my office that really didn't have any of that any stability. Of that. Right. And so I, all of a sudden it was like that. I like really blessed, like, you know, like, like this insight of like, I, I, you can really quickly take that for granted and understand right. that you think that that's kind of everyone's story and that's not everyone's story. I was really, really blessed. Yeah. And, and because my family believed in me, I mm -hmm. really truly believe that's like how I was able to get here. And, and I want to say too, you know, this, this is not easy stuff to talk about. Mm -mm. This is not easy for Natalie to talk about. It's not easy for me to talk about. I mean, I had to reach out to my family and I was like, Hey, you guys, okay. Cause I'm going to tell my story. Mm -hmm. And I was really worried because the last thing I wanted to do was ever hurt somebody else because it isn't just my story it's my story but it's not just my story it paints yeah. other people but but i think the reality wasn't here's what i was really touched by was they came back and they were like if we can help anybody yeah even one even, even one if we person. can help anybody if we can help anybody do something differently make a different choice like mm -hmm. we totally get it and like you do you yeah that's amazing yeah. and that's who they are I mean, like that's that's how lucky that i am but so i, I just want to say that you can also be very lucky and have really awful things happen you can have a great route and still have really chaotic and complicated, yep. traumatic things happen in your life. Yep. And so, you know, and you I can have an, an otherwise pretty outwardly, it looks like a perfect life. <laughs> and the internal experience is very different. Yeah. And, and I have a lot of, of awe and respect for um, just the individuality of every person that's ever walked in my Absolutely. office and it shared their story with me. And it's it, that vulnerability. It takes a lot of courage it to totally finally does. say to somebody. So I know on the outside, it looks great on the inside. It ain't great. It and that's really where the, the biggest disconnection can happen is when, when this person hits their edge and then can't reach out mm -hmm. um, or doesn't know where to reach out to or reaches out to the wrong thing or the wrong person. Um, it really can 
you know, pivot things in a direction that's n not great. Exactly. Um, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have any, you know, ideas that connection itself is the perfect solution. Yeah. Um, we're not, you know, selling snake oil. We're not trying to <laughs> say that we have the perfect answer for all exactly. of this. This is collective wisdom and it's collective wisdom that comes from a personal space and it comes from a professional Absolutely. space. Uh, and we feel really, really profoundly like it needs to be out there yeah. that this, you know, it doesn't do Jen and I any good just to keep this to ourselves. No. And we need to be out there. If mm -hmm. we, if we're not willing to share of ourselves in this story, there's every chance you'll all see me cry at least four times throughout this series. I'll just warn you now. Um, that's, that's real. And we wanted to show up yeah. real. We didn't want it to be canned. We didn't want it to feel like you're watching a, you know, a docu-series yep. and there's nothing wrong with that. It, this is, this is two mental health professional moms that are deeply passionate and love their community and want to create change. And, and this is our grassroots effort at doing that. And so if we don't start by being vulnerable and sharing our stories, I felt like we were going to go into this really inauthentically. Yeah. And I didn't want to just be this like up here professional because I think, and you've heard this probably a million times too. I think in our offices, people are like, so I'm sure that you don't ever go home and argue with your family. Cause you know, all these things yes. I was like, crying, and like, <laughs> Oh my God, are you kidding? So I think one of the things that does even us sharing, our stories is dispels this myth that like therapists always have their shit together or we're always right you know like right like yeah. Natalie like the super educated like super successful woman like people don't look at us and always see those things because you can't look at someone and see it right. that is a complete lie yeah. it's it's really that it's within the stories and it's within connection that we begin to see that we are so much more alike than we are different but i think right. that that's really important even in those spaces when people look at us and they want to, and that's partly a therapeutic thing like i get it <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. Like, I get, there's reason for that but i would have to like i would crack up and be like oh yeah we know i never argue with my husband i never yell at my kid i you know are you kidding like we are just as human as the next person and yeah. this is evidence that you know, we can live through these things and right. still show up and do this work and, and love hard and want to create change and do things. Yes. But we come with as stories. Can, as we are can human. You. As, as can, can you. you. Like everybody's got a story and everybody's got this really human component of this. Mm -hmm. And we just want to make sure that that's front and center in this, that it's not like we're showing up in like, you know, high and mighty no. mental health experts, mm -hmm. like clearly. <laughs> <laughs> clearly have our own stories and our own traumas and our own struggles and so that's how we wanted to like at least kick off this this series for you all to so let you guys get to know us a little bit know our stories and then the next thing we're going to be doing is is talking about um the call to connections obviously the name for our series but the next video is going to be um the real story of teen suicide we really want to start getting yeah. nitty-gritty sorry we just created the name today <laughs> um we wanted to get more nitty-gritty about kind of like really what what is suicide about not yeah. just the symptoms not about the things you guys can go get on a website which will try to create some connection for that as well yeah that's been done that's kind of tired like i was like we just didn't want to get on and do the same things everybody's done five million times we're like no let's get on and talk about this yeah. in a little bit different way educate from a hopefully different perspective perspective and, and create a space for people to think and talk about this differently. Right. Um, and so that's what we plan to do in this next series. So Great. the next one coming up will be the real story of teen suicide. Yeah. So that'll be coming. So Great. And we hope that you join us yeah. and, and find this to be helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope that this was useful and stay tuned for the next video.